Hello everyone, today we're going to be integrating sine of x over x dx, evaluated from zero to infinity, using the internet's uh, most favourite integration technique, I, I must say, Feynman's technique. Okay, Now it has a few names, Feynman's technique or differentiation under the integral sign. It's, it, it has a few names um, referenced in pop culture, for example, like uh, the Big Bang Theory. <laughs> um, anyway, so, um, yeah, so we're going to be uh, integrating sine of x over x, evaluated from zero to infinity. And of course, there is the beautiful man himself, Richard Feynman, down there. Okay, um, I have actually recorded this video already, and I finished it and realised I did not record my audio, so that was brilliant. Anyway, um, I have checked, and they've recorded. the audio is recording this time. Anyway, so we are going to be looking at the integral from zero to infinity of sine of x over x dx. Now... I urge you to to attempt this using the sort of um, standard integration techniques that you may learn at A level maths or A level further maths, and honestly, best of luck to you. It is um, don't know if it's possible or not. To be honest, um, anyway, <laughs> um, go ahead and 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 try. Um, we're going to be using Feynman's technique anyway, and Feynman's technique involves defining an integration function. Uh, with a new sort of parameter or, 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 or a new variable, if you will, okay? And that function that we are going to define, i of a, is going to be the integral from 0 to infinity of sine of x over x times e to the negative a x, like so. And what I'm going to do, actually, is change those letters, uh, those letter A's to the yellow colour so you can see them a little bit better. There we go. Um, and the reason we are doing, well, first of all, that negative there in front of the AX, that will become apparent later on uh, as, as for the reason we have that there. Um, but as you can see, um, we are concerned about when i is evaluated at zero, when, when a is equal to zero, because if a is equal to zero, the exponent here becomes zero, e to the power of zero, of course, becomes one, and so i to the uh, i evaluated, what am I talking about? i of zero is equal to the integral from uh, zero to infinity of sine of x over x dx, like so. Um, so that's what we are going to go ahead and do. Um, so, first things first. Well, we've defined our function. Let's go ahead and differentiate both sides um, with respect to a. So, i of a differentiated with respect to a is, of course, i dash of yellow colour a. Okay. And, well, what happens when we differentiate the right-hand side with respect to a? Well, we are attempting to... Uh, differentiate through an integral almost when our variable is trapped inside of the integral. So, of course, we are going to be using partial derivatives. So, we are going to sort of bring the derivative inside, if you will, and uh, differentiate partially with respect to a. So, this is going to be the integral from 0 to infinity of the partial derivative with respect to a of sine of x over x times e to the negative ax dx. Um, oh, yellow colour for the a, of course. My bad, I did forget that. There is a and a. Okay, so, well, we are differentiating partially with respect to a, so everything that isn't an a is just a constant. So, sine of x over x in the a world is just a constant. Um, this x right here in the a world is just a constant. And so the derivative of this function is actually going to be fairly simple. It's going to be the integral from 0 to infinity of sine of x over x stays as it is. It's just a constant times the negative times negative x e to the negative a x. OK, and this arises because, of course, if you take the derivative with respect to x of e to the kx, where k is a constant, we get k e to the kx. Similarly, if it's a negative, OK, that negative k just comes down to the front. That's exactly what's happened here. We've got this negative x that has just found its way down at the front there. OK, so as you can see, 
that x and that x cancel very, very nicely. And so we get i dash of color a is equal to the integral from 0 to infinity of sine of x. Oh, it doesn't need to be up there anymore. Sine of x. I can write neater than that. It looks like a spider has died on my on my iPad. Sine of x e to the negative a x dx, of course. Okay, well, this integral is significantly easier for us to solve, okay? Because we can just do this by parts. So that's exactly what we are going to do. I've also just forgotten that we have a negative sign there. That negative sign is going to make its way to the front of this integral, okay? I do apologise for forgetting that, um, so please don't write angry comments in the comment section for missing for me missing that one out. Um, I have corrected it. Anyway, so yeah, significantly easier for us to solve. Now, let's go ahead and grab this integral and bring it over here. I'm going to find uh, define j to be the integral from 0 to infinity. We'll deal with the negative a bit later on. Uh, the integral from 0 to infinity of sine of x e to the negative ax dx. Okay, now we're just going to do uh, integration by parts. So u is equal to sine of x. v dash is equal to e to the negative ax. u dash is equal to cos of x. v is equal to 1, negative 1 over a, e to the negative ax. Okay, and using the integration by parts formula, uv minus the integral of v du, we of course get um, negative 1 over a sine of x e to the negative ax um, minus the integral of v, which is negative 1 over a e to the negative ax. So that negative can come to the front to join with this negative here and create a plus. And that 1 over a can, can, can join it in the front as well, e to the negative ax. And of course, we times by the derivative of u, which was cos of x. So there we go. Well, uh, we have we got any closer? Yes, we have, because we can just do integration by parts again. We can say our cos of x is u and our dv dx is e to the negative ax. Okay, so u is equal to cosine of x. v dash is equal to e to the negative ax. So therefore, the derivative of u is negative sine of x and v is negative 1 over a e to the negative a x like so and then of course just uh, employing the uh, integration by parts formula again we get negative 1 over a cos of x uh, e to the negative a x um, plus no it's not it's minus the integral of 1 over a sine of x e to the negative a x dx which should alarm bells should be ringing here because this right here, this, the integral of sine of x e to, the negative, e to the negative ax is just what our j was. So we can write that in. This is equal to j, or negative 1 over j, for that matter. Okay, so let's write in what we have so far. So we have got j is equal to, and we're just going to bring this down, negative 1 over a sine of x sine of x e to the negative ax plus 1 over a time, times negative 1 over a cosine of x e to the negative ax minus 1 over a times j, where j was our integral. Okay then, so expanding this out, we get j is equal to negative 1 over a sine of x e to the negative ax minus 1 over a squared cosine of x e to the negative ax minus 1 over a squared j. Let's go ahead and times up by a squared on both sides. We get a squared j is equal to negative a sine of x e to the negative ax minus cosine of x e to the negative ax minus j. Let's go ahead and add j to both sides. So we get a squared plus j is equal to all of this. So negative a sine of x e to the negative ax minus cosine of x 
e to the negative ax. Well, we can... Oh, sorry, that should be a j there. My bad. Um, let's factor out j now. So we get j times a squared plus 1 is equal to... Um, let's factor out negative e to the uh, negative ax. So let me just bring this down actually a minute. Down you go. Right, so negative e to the negative ax. And then what, well, what we're going to have inside of those brackets, well, we've got a sine of x plus cosine of x. Let's divide by a squared plus 1 now to get j. j is equal to negative e to the negative ax. a sine of x plus cosine of x over a squared plus 1. Okay, fantastic. Now, j is equal to this, and if you recall from earlier, well, why did we create j in the first place? Well, it was to evaluate this integral right here. This integral had a negative on the front. So, we know that i dash of a, okay, is equal to negative j. So negative j, where j was this right here, okay? So i dash of a is equal to um, e to negative ax, a sine of x plus cosine of x over a squared plus 1. Now, of course, um, j was, a, was the integral from 0 to infinity, right? There it was. So let's go ahead and evaluate those limits. Okay. So from 0 to infinity. So i dash of a is going to be the limit. And let's choose a letter. Let's choose the letter... Um, t. Okay, t. Uh, so the limit as t approaches infinity of e to the negative ax, a sine of x plus cosine of x over a squared plus 1. Evaluated from t, from 0 to t. Okay, well, let's have a think. What happens when uh, we substitute t in and t approaches infinity? Okay. Well, when we substitute t in, we're going to get e to the negative a t, like this, and then dot, sort of the a sine x cosine x over a squared plus 1, okay? But more importantly, let's think about what happens as t approaches infinity, okay? So as t approaches infinity, e to the negative a t, which can be written as 1 over e to the a t, well, as t approaches infinity, this approaches infinity, and 1 over, and, uh, one over um, x, as x approaches infinity, for example, approaches 0. So our um, e to the negative a t, as t approaches infinity, approaches 0. Which means that this entire thing approaches 0 when we substitute t into it. Okay? Because this e to the negative uh, ax is going to uh, sort of decrease faster than a sine of x cos of x or a sine of t cos of t sorry as t approaches infinity is, is is ever going to grow okay it reduces faster so this entire thing ap approaches zero um, so we know that i dash of a is equal to zero and then of course we've got to evaluate it at zero so e to the negative 0 a sine of 0 plus cosine of 0. Okay. a squared plus 1. Well, e to the negative uh, 0 is just 1. Uh, sine of 0 is 0, and cos of 0 is uh, 1, of course. And so we get, we get i dash of a is equal to... 0 minus 1 over a squared plus 1. Okay, so i dash of a then can be written as negative 1 over a squared plus 1. Now then, um, why are we even doing this in the first place? Um, this is because from here we can get back what i of a is, the what the integral is. Uh, 
because that's what we were trying to do originally, wasn't it? We were we defined i of a to be the integral from 0 to infinity sine of x over x e to the negative ax dx. Um, if we can evaluate, if we can find out what i of a is equal to, we have therefore found out what this is equal to. And that is going to massively help us because all we need is this when a is 0 to solve our original integral. Okay. So let's go ahead and um, find what i of a is. Well, i of a is going to be the integral of both sides because we have the derivative of a, i dash of a there. So to get rid of it, uh, or to find i of a, the original i of a function, we integrate both sides. Now, luckily for us, the, uh, the negative integral of 1 over a squared plus 1 I should say this is with respect to a, um, is, um, is, is a standard integral, okay? i of a is therefore equal to negative arctan of a plus c, okay? Now, i of a, we know to be the integral from 0 to infinity of sine of x over x e to the negative ax dx, and so we can say this is equal to the negative of arctan of a plus c. Right, and so, um, well, we need, to, we need to find that plus c. So we need to, um, we need to find an a value for which we can sort of know the value of this integral, which will allow us to rearrange for c, okay? And the one that springs to mind, which is why we introduce this negative sign so early on, is as a approaches infinity, okay? As a approaches infinity, as we discussed, e to the negative ax approaches zero. And so, when a is infinity, we know what this integral is equal to. As a approaches infinity, or let's say just when a is infinity, I know that's not technically correct, but when a is, e is infinity, Okay, well, the integral from 0 to infinity of sine of x over x times 0 is going to just give us 0. We've just got 0. And that's equal to negative arctan of infinity plus c. Well, as a approaches infinity, negative arctan of infinity, or negative arctan of a as a approaches infinity, gives us negative pi over 2 plus c, which implies that c is pi over 2 when a is, um, you know, approaching infinity. Okay. Okay, cool. So we now know that the integral from 0 to infinity of sine of x over x, uh, e to the negative ax dx, is equal to the negative arctan of a plus pi over 2. And we are almost there. Our original integral, the integral from 0 to infinity of sine of x over x dx was when i was evaluated, or when a was equal to 0, i evaluated at 0. And so we are going to do exactly that. Okay, So a is equal to 0 now which means our solution is going to be negative arctan of 0 plus pi over 2. Negative arctan of 0 is 0 plus pi over 2 is just pi over 2, which implies then that our, our integral from 0 to infinity of sine of x over x dx is equal to pi over 2. Two, and that is it quite a beautiful solution thank you for watching